My name is Reverend Kwame Rubadiri, and I'm the head of Christian Education and Discipleship here at Christ is the Answer Ministries. It's been my privilege today to share a message on evangelizing despite opposition here at Sitam Gong. It's been a real thrill to just spend time with the congregation, and I know that many of you are part of the congregation, but of course you join us on social media uh, as well. We looked at three areas of opposition um, in the message today. Uh, the first had to do with what was experienced by the apostles, the, the ones who were first to receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and that God used to take the message uh, in the book of Acts to the rest of the world. As you well know, um, the apostles had gathered in Acts uh, chapter 2 in the upper room and the Holy Spirit came upon them and filled them, empowered them, gave them the ability to uh, speak in tongues and to minister to a large group of people in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. Thousands came to Christ on that day. And as the book of Pentecost continues, it begins to develop a theme of how many lives were being transformed and people's lives were being changed, their homes were being transformed, people were giving their lives to the Lord. They're even giving their property uh, to God and to the service of the church. Uh, as well. But then around chapter 5, we see the beginnings of opposition affecting the move of the church, the growth of the church, and the spreading of the message. And there were three key areas which seemed to show up uh, for our attention uh, in, in the next uh, chapters of uh, the book of Acts 5, 6, and 7, as we see how the disciples coped with the opposition that they were dealing with. The first level of opposition had to do with jealous leaders. The high priest and various other uh, religious authorities were so upset with the success that um, the apostles were having, that thousands were coming uh, to Christ and becoming members of the, of the church, uh, and many of them were converted Jews. So the, the spiritual leaders, the religious leaders, were losing some of their own people uh, from the temple to become followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. This led to them arresting the apostles, putting them in jail, and before the night was over, the, the Lord had sent an angel to release the apostles from jail. They left jail, and they were told, go straight back to the temple and keep preaching, keep telling people about what God has done for you and to you. And this is how you deal with uh, people who are jealous of your success, jealous of your ministry, or jealous of your ability to share the gospel message. Just keep doing it. Uh, ignore them, ignore their complaints, and just keep going. The Holy Spirit will continue to, to help you move forward. But then the apostles had to deal with a, an increased level, a ratcheted up level of opposition, and that had to do with an institution. The Bible records that the, a council of elders called the Sanhedrin, uh, which was the most powerful council of leaders, of Jewish leaders in the whole country, they met in Jerusalem, there were 71 of them. Um, they, they tried to be like those 70 elders who uh, supported the ministry of Moses. Uh, but uh, they, they, of course, were not listening to what God was saying through the message of Jesus Christ. They actually opposed him, eventually led him to Pilate to be uh, crucified. This group called the apostles and said, we're giving you a command, we're giving you a, a, an official order. You're not allowed to preach any longer. And they said to the Sanhedrin that, well, we, we must obey God. We have to do what he's told us to do. The Holy Spirit is upon us and we are his witnesses. And nothing is going to stop us from doing that. The third level of opposition, which I think is something that's closest to us. Thankfully, we, we have very little opposition from our leaders. Most of them support us and allow us to uh, witness. The institutions in this country, uh, which are a blessing, support the church by and large and they allow the church to propagate, they allow the church to spread, they allow the gospel to be preached on the airwaves, in person, and so forth. But I think one of the most serious levels of opposition is from ourselves, is from within. When we fail to live up to the standards of a Christian life, we find an example in the life of Stephen in chapter six and seven of the book of Acts, who committed himself uh, not just to serve the church, but to also preach and to share the same gospel message. Stephen was called by the same council, the same group. They thought they had dealt with the apostles, but here was uh, somebody who was outside the apostles group, just a member of the church, being used mightily 
by God as a witness and as someone to explain the gospel. Stephen's life was so committed to God. It was such an example of somebody who loves God and walks with him that nobody could refute uh, what he was saying. They couldn't, they couldn't, you know, point a finger at him. In fact, the only way they could get him in trouble was to lie and say that he had said something wrong about the temple or about Moses. And um, uh, Stephen stood his ground and he, he, he was able to show that if you live a life that is consistent with the message that God has given to us, God will always give you success. The opposition may have to find a, another way to try to get you to stop, but because you, you, you practice what you preach, your, uh, your walk matches your talk, um, nobody can, can question you and nobody can stand against what God is doing through your life. So I, I hope that you uh, uh, take into account the fact that opposition is a fact of life. It is a fact of our Christian lives. It will come in some form or other as long as you're a believer. But at the end of the day, keep doing what God has asked us to do and make sure that your life matches with the Word of God and you will be successful. Please keep uh, joining us here on uh, uh, Sidam Gong's social media outlets. Uh, you'll always find uh, transmissions and messages such as this on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, on uh, TikTok as well, uh, and on Instagram. Uh, join and, and be a part of this huge movement which reaches so many more people on social media. Tell others about it. Share the links and let them know that they can be blessed uh, just as those who have come to church have been blessed. Amen.